Apple just released their M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max, Max, and they look amazing. But there were 20 things that Apple did not mention at their event. They were very sneaky this time, so I have a lot more secrets than normal. So let's go ahead and jump right into them. The first one has got to do with the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. Previously, they would keep older generation ones available for a while, just at a lower price, but this time they completely got rid of it without telling us, and that means that the seven years of touch bar are finally over. And for number two, we have the replacement for the 13 which is the same 14 inch, but with the M3 processor now, and it comes with a single fan that they showed us, but didn't tell us. So if you get the M3, you have one less fan, which could be fine. But the other thing they didn't mention here is that it gets two NAND chips instead of one on the previous smaller, cheaper MacBook Pro. And that means that the issues we had with multitasking are now completely fixed. And they did that by giving us 512 gigs as standard instead of 256, which is great. Now, as for number three, even though that $1,600 price tag seems like a big jump from the previous 1300, if you actually do the math and you upgrade to 512, which we recommended to pretty much everybody because of that issue, that is only a $100 price difference. And for that, you get a lot of extras like the better webcam, the new design, the amazing display, much better speakers, and a of course, you have more ports plus the SD card slot, which is a great deal for $100 more, let alone getting the M3 processor. And for the fourth secret that Apple didn't mention is that even though we have Thunderbolt ports and an HDMI, which is great, the 14-inch M3 MacBook still only supports one external display, just like the M1 MacBook Air that you could still buy brand new for as low as $750 on Amazon. I thought for sure the M3 chips would support two, but nope, and that does suck. And for number five, that HDMI port is not as powerful as the M3 Pros, or even the one that came on the M2 Pro 14 inch for the same amount as this M3 version. Those support 4K up to 240 Hertz, or 8K up to 60 Hertz, but this M3 version, it's actually limited to 6K 60 Hertz, which is okay, and also 4K 120. So it is not as powerful as far as refresh rates or resolution, not a huge deal, but Apple did not mention that. And for number six, this one sucks more, and that is the fact that the 14 inch M3 has one less Thunderbolt port, and I completely didn't see that until way later. So so instead of having three Thunderbolt ports like we've had the whole time we've had 14 inch MacBooks, you get two. And the port that they got rid of is on the right hand side. So now we just have that HDMI and SD card slot. And I kind of wish if they had to get rid of one of those, they would have got rid of the one on the left so you can have the flexibility of choosing which side to plug into, or even better, just make it a regular USB Type-C if it couldn't support it. Number seven has got to do with charging. We now get a set 70 watt USB-C power adapter with the base models and not only the M3 $1,600 one, if you get a $2,000 one, you still get an adapter that cannot fast charge the laptop. You have to go in and spend $20 more to get a fast charger or spend at least $2,200 on an unbinned version of an M3 Pro to get it, which kind of sucks because if you want to buy a MacBook right now, the ones that are going to be kept in stock online and in store, they will not have that, so you have to custom order. Number eight has got to do with battery life and batteries in general. Now, I saw that the M3 has a 70 watt hour battery compared to 72.4, but what changed wasn't the M3 cheaper version. In fact, if you're getting an M3 Pro or Max, they actually made the battery capacity larger than in the previous 14 inch models. And maybe they did that to help with battery life to keep it the same because this time, if you get an M3, you will get up to 22 hours of uh, video playback like they showed off on stage compared to 18 hours for the more professional chips. And then for web use, you will get 15 hours compared to 12. So we definitely have better battery life with the M3 chip. For number nine, you can now only get a terabyte bytes of storage if you buy an M3 Max, whereas previously you could get a Pro chip and get a terabyte. So if you had 
have the cache and you don't need extra performance but a lot of storage, well before you didn't have to upgrade your chips, this time you have to and that's gonna cost a lot more money. Now the next one is about the color options. The way Apple presented the new Space Black at the event, it made it seem like an exclusive for the M3 Max 16 inch models, but nope, you can even get a base M3 Pro and get Space Black, which surprised me when I looked at the configurator. Now with that, if you want to get Space Gray on the higher end laptops, you can no longer do that. And then this way, it also means that if you have a Space Gray, people will know that either you have an old Mac or you have the new cheap one. Number 11 has got to do with their accessories. And we thought for sure with everything switching to USB-C, Apple would update them, but nope. The keyboard and the mouse still come with a lightning port and the lightning cables, which seems insane being almost 2020. Four. For number 12, even though Apple gave us relatively good deals on the base 14 inch model, they actually raised the top spec M3 Max. It used to always be $3,500 for that setup, but now it is $4,000 if you want the full performance that they advertised at the event. It now costs a massive $7,500 if you spec it out all the way. With that, for number 13, the M3 Max that is binned now costs $3,500. And it gives you a 30 core GPU, whereas the 30 core M2 Max version used to cost you 3,300. So you get the same amount of cores, but you pay more money. And for the next one, number 14, the CPU on the M3 Max is now binned as well, which it never used to. So before you could save money and get the weaker graphics with the same CPU performance, but now you have to spend more money, even if you have no use for for extra graphics performance. For number 15, we're gonna jump back to the M2 Pro. And while prices have not changed, performance unfortunately has. Even though these are all now three nanometer designs and the M3 and the M3 Max now have more transistors packed in, with the M3 Pro, it actually went down this year to 37 billion transistors compared to 40 billion with the M2 Pro. And this is probably why Apple kept comparing the M3 Pro to just the M1 Pro. And for 16, as far as the CPU cores, when you look, you still see a total of 12 cores like before, but instead of eight performance cores and four efficiency cores with the M3 Pro, they got rid of two performance cores this year and they swapped it with efficiency, which is why when Apple was talking about the M3 Pro's performance and they said it was 20% faster, they compared it to the M1 Pro because the M2 Pro was also 20% faster than the M1 Pro. And that means that this year with the M3 Pro, it is not any faster in terms of CPU than last generations. And that is crazy. And for 17, the M3 Pro's graphics now has one less core compared to last year. So from 19 down to 18 graphics cores. And technically it could be 20, because the Pro chip always had half of the graphics cores of the Mac chip, but this time they made it different, likely to save money because they did not raise prices like they did with the M3 Max. And for 18, another way that they saved money is with the memory. Now, when you look at it, you see 18 gigs of RAM compared to 16, so it seems like a nice, sweet, free upgrade, but the M3 Pro has 150 gigabit per second bandwidth compared to 200 100 gigabit per second for the M2 Pro and even the M1 Pro. Now they did this by using one less memory channel and using less chips, which saves them money. And based on the way Apple wrote it, you cannot get back to that 200 they had before by upgrading your RAM, which really sucks. And for 19, the M3 Max's bin version also drops down. It now has 300 gigabit per second bandwidth compared to 400, so 25% less bandwidth, which is how much memory can go through at one time. Now in previous years, they made a huge deal about bandwidth. It was right there on the main page, but now they don't even talk about it at all on that page, 
or even on the full spec page and you only see it using the compare tool. And of course, when Apple showed off performance increases, they talk about the full spec chip. And for 20, the nice thing is that if you do spend $500 more on the M3 Max, you actually go back to the standard 400 gigabit per second bandwidth that we have seen for multiple generations ever since Apple Silicon came to the these new redesigned MacBooks. So you can't fix it there, but by spending 500 bucks, and that does suck that we're having that issue. Now, of course, we ordered a ton of different MacBooks, so we will see how these kind of capped and binned and worse versions perform to the better ones and the last generation, because in certain tasks, they could actually be slower. So make sure to click that circle about to subscribe and the notifications down below so you guys do not miss that. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next one.